it's going to be a development to our own self in the future. Then, a second question, I'm a medical physiology student. Is, there a course, is it advisable for someone like me in my course to do a course online that is different from my course of study? Now, if I do it, what are the platforms I should advertise myself and my skills? Thank you. Okay. Okay. That is giving me permission to continue. Uh, so, for the first question, lot of courses, lot of courses. One of the one one of the courses I would suggest is you can write it down. Is that courses like networking skills on Coursera? That courses like data science on Coursera. Introduction to artificial intelligence and machine learning. Praise the Lord. As we on the seminar or interaction, one of our mommy is a lecturer in Boise, a wife of a professor Nuno, and she's a lecturer in the Bamidele University, a Kerekiti. Mommy, mommy Ololu. God bless you. You can join us here. You are welcome. God bless you. Can we just say clap for Jesus in, in our life? God bless you, man. So, do you understand that now? So, most times, I think the, the, the courses you are going to go for is dependent on your kind of person. If you are a content writer, then go for content writing uh, courses on Coursera. If you just put content writing courses on on Google, you will have a like you have hundred of, of of courses there, and I'm not kidding you. So I think it's more relative to your kind of person. For someone like me, I will go for data science. For someone like me, I will go to personal development. For someone like me, I will go for leadership. But that might not be your kind of person. So, but go for the courses. And for the second one, because of time, you don't have to do courses that are actually linked only to your course of study. If you're studying medical theology content creating that is not that content writing is not the same as medical physiology right but that's what you are doing and let me say this maybe if I give my mommy and daddies without foolishness wisdom has no value without foolishness if some people are not foolish wisdom will not be appreciated if some people are not poor wealth will not be appreciated so choose where you belong Praise the Lord. We thank God for our daddies, our mommy, and our, <laughs> our brother, our boy, <laughs> that has come to grace and honor this our meeting. I pray the Lord will continue to renew them in Jesus' name. And out of the treasure they have been given to us, the Lord will prune it and it will be more and more in Jesus' name. So, to that question, as per the course you are supposed to take in the institution, yes, that's a side that he told us as a, an academician, but you are a child of God. After having your own desire, the Bible says, the desires of the righteous shall be granted. Don't forget to ask from God too. Romans 8.14, it said, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the children of God. As we told you the other time, yesterday, there is a portion. God has an, uh, an expected end for you that he has designed for. That's when you are a child of God. Though, you have been born again. You are family of God. Then there is a portion aligned for you. So it's now left for you to ask, to seek the face of God. You are a child of God. You are a spiritual entity. You are not just any ordinary person. Now, you have the Holy Spirit in you. And the Bible says the anointing in you will direct you we teach you all things. 
So you have to find the time of waiting to know the will and the plan of God for you. You have to be very prayerful. Sometimes it might not be you hearing audible voice as per what you do or not. But number one, you have to start with prayer. Allow God, consult God. Then you just discover that your desire, that's when what he is talking about comes in. Without praying, you just see somebody is this one. This one is lucrative now. I will venture this one is making money now. This one is raining now. You want to go into it. You might come back regretting you now. You have to pray. Wait first before the Lord. Allow God. He said, um, let's say, uh, it's, uh, when you embark on things that God is not, if God is not, is not responsible for such a project. So the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Romans 8, 14, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the children of God. It's very important. Thank you. I want to ask one question before I read this question out. How many of us have questions? How many of us have interaction with our mommy and daddies? So people are saying that education is no longer useful. And uh, they say we are in the world of business. So what is the essence of going to school, really to PhD level, when there is no employment? So, and uh, if you ask our students, even in my class, they say, what is it, what is it I'm, I'm teaching? What my students said, is it education? It's not to get money. Huh? It's not to have money. They say, there are many things you can do outside without education. Huh? So, we can't go with education after we finish this day, we, we go and do another thing. So, I want to say that, sir. Is education still relevant? Is a uh, is first degree. If we stay on first degree, can we relevant? If we have, if we have, if we have go to school, we have gone to school and we have studied first degree and we have no have money, can we still continue? Do we have future on educations? So that's another my question. Praise the Lord. First of all, I want to say that a nation that wants to crumble should zero education. Because without education, an individual cannot go. If you say education is not relevant because of the situation of things around in our economy, I pity such an individual. Because even if you are going to venture into business at the end of the day, you still need education. Because there is no how somebody that is well educated and, and, and another person that is not educated if the two of you venture into the same trade at the end of the day you discover that the person that is educated will bypass you because education is not limited to what you are being taught alone it, it you know it uh, improves your initiative your way of thinking the way you interact with individuals you know there are some people Maybe you, the two of you, you are vying for a contract in a particular organization. By the time the two of you get there, by, by the time you interact with people, they will know that at least this person will be able to perform better. You will, you will be creative in whatever business you venture into. But I want to advise, if you want to go to school, go to school. Like, I want to give an example of two people. I was in Oshogbo yesterday. There was this guy that we met in school. He has some financial problem. That time I was, I used to assist him. We read economies. I was there for my MPhil. He was doing his masters then. Those people that are saying without money, you may not need to come continue with your education. This guy was into all these uh, importing shoes and bags. No, at times by the time they will send it, they will send the one that will almost um, be spoiling. I said, as an economist, you know, as, a, as an economist, there is a particular area which if you are able to grab very well and grounded and rooted in it, sky cannot even limit you. I said, you are vast in econometrics. Why all this nonsense? Go and look, go and get yourself rooted in econometrics. And by the time you are into it, let people know. By the time you are into it, you forget about all this yeah, yeah, business that is hindering you from 
by men making money. I mean, from uh, having full time for you, of course, because it's like you'll be at the same time reading as well as making money. He said, Money, ah, or rather, they so. To cut the long story short, he took to my advice. Today, he's not, he's not even looking for a job. Because I was time, I said, Femi, you are not getting younger. Go and marry. Say, I'm mommy, go low, what should I say? You are going to know she shall fair. With master, if anybody comes to you from master's analysis, the least you need to charge is 50,000. Because I know how much I, I paid when I wanted to do my MSc analysis. He said, one well, so I said, go and try it. He said, for PhD, I said, minimum is between 150 and 200. Go and ask. I said, mommy, are you sure? I said, those people, they are just cheating you. They are playing on your intelligence. And he yielded to my advice. Lo and behold, he did not borrow money for, for the wedding. Even as at yesterday, when I was sitting with him in Oshobo, he was using this Corolla, Yeah. And it's not, it's not working for any government. So the verification I went for yesterday, now I, I know there was no network where we were doing it. I just called him. He rushed down. He said, Mommy, what is it? I said, When you are coming, come with your laptop and your Wi Fi. By the time he came, we did it. You know, he was not telling me yesterday where we went. He now said he was looking for a place because he's now doing seminar for people. So you cannot compare education with anything in this life. His wife is a pharmacist and he's not doing government job. I you know after the marriage I told him because I was like well, when she had known me she has this is my mother. Whenever she I said, tell me you need to go for your PhD. I said, Mommy, show me. I said you need it. It will give you because at times if they want to do any uh, analysis now, even in Ife, uh, the lecturers will be looking for him to go back call duty. So go and look for we are looking for Femi. He's living in the show, but they will call him. In fact, it is because of all the wala in the department that I decided to relocate her to a show. And there's another guy again in Westy. The guy finished there. By privilege, I got to know him. He too, he was uh, a well groomed in this, uh, in red education, but he's good in this uh, uh, primary data analysis. He too, ah, mommy, so mommy, so easy. Mommy, this and that, I used to assist him because the guy is nice. He's good for me in some areas. And I said, Will you listen to me? He said, Yes. I counseled him just the same way I counseled Femi. He took to it. I said, Go for your master's for you to be relevant. Because if you don't have master's or PhD, you'll not be able to penetrate. He said, Go for your master's. By the time those people see your CV, they will know you are something. You may not need to look for a job. He yielded to my advice. And today, he's, I said, when it's got to a time, I said, go and marry. Because I know you are now, you can now stand on your own. I am just the same way. Personally, he's on his master's. He has an office at opposite the state hospital. And he's not even looking for a job. Whenever there is anything in affair today, it will be he's the first person to record with. They will just have to call him Shani. So if you are saying that education is not relevant, don't tell anybody this. Don't allow anybody deceive you. It's because you have not been able to identify the area in which you can thrive. Am I making sense? So the it, even from somebody like me, it's because of some things that is still hindering me. But all the same, I still do all this uh, economic analysis for some people. But before you can do it, you will have time because you have to read a lot. You cannot just do it and give it to the person. You have to read, I mean, you have to analyze and interpret, and it involves a lot of reading. And I don't have that time yet. So, what I'm saying in essence is that if, you know, we have uh, our talents are different as individuals, we don't have the same talent, we don't have the same potentials, we don't have the same uh, strength. But God knows us. So like my pastor has said, if you pray and God directed you to a particular career, once it is the will of God and you are diligent, because all the other, God is not interested in a lazy person. 
before you can tap, you must be diligent. If you're a lazy type and God say go and do this, and you then trying to eat, and you are not diligent in it, you will not make you may not make headway. But if you are diligent, you are prayerful, and you are ready to to go to any length in that particular course, then your future is bright. Let me stop there for a while. Uh, thank you, Sister Mary Olufayo. Uh, she has said it all, but I just want to add a word or two to what she has said. When I was an undergraduate at the University of Ibadan, I saw an inscription on the door of one of my lecturers, and it reads uh, thus: If you think education is expensive try ignorance and it made meanings to me there was a colleague in those days who did NCE but had no job he was employed as a clerical officer and I advised him why don't you try and go for your first degree UI has just started the external degree program, which you can take advantage of. I'm talking of 1988. said, no, the one I read, I've not got a job. They are now advising that I should go further. Lo and behold, about three months after, they now regraded him as an executive officer, taking into consideration the NC certificate that he has. And UI had given him an admission of probable first degree, which he has profited. He now began to move for admission. So if he had taken to that, he wouldn't have had that challenge. So the long and short of it is when advertisements are out, vacancies for job, there is always a time limit. At times, they can say six weeks. At times, maybe two months. So if you already have what it takes, you can easily package your CV and submit. But you cannot rush to school in two months and come out with the, and come back home with the certificate. So you need to work ahead of time. And maybe somebody will assist me to answer this question. Because when you say education is no more relevant or fashionable or what have you, since the country Nigeria got independence, can you tell me of any state in Nigeria where the best farmer of the year was made a commissioner for a Greek? Or in the whole of Nigeria, where the best farmer of the country is appointed the Minister of the Agriculture. If we, if, we, if we go back to somebody who, who may not even know how to handle hold and cut lashes, but who, had the, who has the certificate. So that is the more reason why we should not talk with education. Regardless of what anybody says, just make up your mind. In those days, <laughs> when my wife was uh, admitted here for a sandwich degree program, a colleague of ours had a budget and said, Ah, kill a kill on she school. I want my But my wife <laughs> made up her mind that uh, she will not be deterred. Today, she is a senior assistant registrar in the university of that certificate and she is due for promotion now as principal assistant registrar. The woman who told her then that uh, it is needless going to school went back to school after four years after my wife had graduated. So don't allow anybody to discourage you. Just be focused. Because when you are educated, even if you are selling ordinary recharge card the way you sell yours will differ from those who never went to school 
So that is just a secret. The Lord will help you in Jesus' name. Do you mind if I add something, sir? If there is no time, then it will be. Okay. Based on what Daddy and Mommy has said, I think one of the mistakes we make as young people is that we think education equals to schooling. We think education and schooling means the same thing. I define education as the ability of the human spirit to be able to look for opportunities within his or environment and embrace the one that he needs as a matter of urgency and importance. That is education. You go to school to get educated, but you can go to school without being educated. So we don't so so the end product of education is not getting a job in that sense. We always like thinking of that job, and it's not our fault. It's not our fault, actually. Because come on, we've been to school with money, I need money. But the reason visit for education is not to get a job. The reason for education is for you, you to grow so that you can become all that God has planned you to become. That is the meaning of education. Don't get educated so that you can work in bank. That's a byproduct. That's a part of maybe. But that's not the reason. That's not the essence of getting educated. Education looks beautiful on people. Get educated. I want to go to... I want to welcome one of our lecturers from Poli. That is a person of welcome. Praise God. Um, I just want to put in from what our mommy said about uh, analysis. There is no course that you study now that you will not do analysis. I saw a brother using her yesterday and he said he's been on it for a while. I'm actually working on I'm using that as an engineer. So I've seen some adverts, pharmacists working with her, medical doctors working with her. So whatever course you are studying, medical, economics, art, or whatever, there will be some data you are gathering and there will be some analysis you are doing on it. Now that you can press your phone, limit the time you are using to press your phone and focus on something that can help your life. Learn a code. I will put it to everybody. Go and learn a code. In the coming days, you will be happy you do. You will be happy you do it. You can sit in the comfort of your house in a day kitty and you are earning money in dollars. There are people that are remote workers. They don't go out. They are not Yahoo boys. So. They are not pressing phone for the wrong reasons. And they are working in the US. They are collecting millions in Naira. And from there, you can even relocate. You can change jobs. So please, now that you still have the time, that you are young, don't focus on Facebook. Somebody made Facebook, and every click you check on it is making his money. That's the truth. Even though Bill Gates is saying he will relinquish his wealth, he's still wealthy. The last time I checked, is $118 billion. He's saying by the, before he dies, he will relinquish everything. But he's still wealthy because of the investment he has made in time past. Invest in your life. Stop pressing for, stop doing Facebook and all those rubbish. Stop wasting your time on Facebook. Learn a code. There is a code that is relevant to the course of study you are doing. Mommy talks of someone who is doing econometrics. And he, a lot of people bring in data and he analyzes it for them. He charges them money. Please spend your time wisely. This is your time. In the next five, seven years now, you are in another phase. Please, spend your time wisely. Learn a code. Learn something relevant to your course of study. Even if it is not relevant, you can marry them. Thank you. I want to go to, I want to go for theater arts. But I, I'm told I can't, I cannot because it is connection. And if I can use my body, sir, is it true? If no, then how can I tell my parents in a polite way that I want to go for theater art? When you talk of going for theater art, do you want to enlist with uh, the likes of uh, uh, Adekola, uh, what have you? Or uh, 
Oh, no, not even Mount Zion. Mount Zion is Christianly. Now, if you are planning to enlist with people like uh, Kola, uh, what's it? Otto Ladi Adikola and uh, uh, Femi Adibai, what have you? Then you might be thinking of uh, that aspect that you mentioned. But if it were to be in the university and you did you have your O level results, you did your jam and you passed, automatically you'll be admitted on merit. You'll be admitted on merit. You don't need to lobby anybody, you don't need to bribe anybody, and you don't need to do anything untoward to get admitted to the university. I think that answers that question. The job. After you have done that uh, theater art, so for you for you to be to be giving a role. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, I, I now understand. I thought the fellow was talking of gaining admission. Okay. Um, as terrible as uh, the policemen are, we still have some Christians. Who are, are in the police uh, service. Lawyers, by their nature, people say they tell lies, they work it out to people, but we still have some Christians who are lawyers. Talk of any profession, even the medical profession. Some doctors specialize. And aborting for teenagers just to get their money. But we have children of God who do such jobs without being involved in those atrocities. So you can take a key from that. If God actual has actually led you to go into that profession, you will be distinct without uh, promoting yourself. If I can put it that way. So you can take a cue from other children of God who are into one trade or the other without uh, dragging the name of the Lord into the mud. You can you can do likewise, and the Lord will help you. Well, the I just let me just chip in one or two things. What what I want to say is that. There is no cause that a children of God cannot venture into. As long as you know the kind of person you are and you know the, the Lord you are serving. You as and another thing is, let me say this. Have you prayed about it? Are you led by God? Because if you are not led by God, you may miss it along the way. But if you are led by God and you stood your ground all through. You cannot. You can never regret it because we, like my pastor has said the other time, that as many that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. So you cannot miss it. There is no cause you cannot study as a child of God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I believe we another the topic of interaction we are taking is a sustainable career. For us to have a better life and to have a, a growth of the church. Your growth is a growth of the church. If you are not growing, church is not growing. If you have money, church will not have money. I'm praying that the God will help us in Jesus' name. And God will help us in Jesus' name. If you are a visitor in a school and uh, you are probably to be a member of Christian faith and Mission, we can just call you that uh, our members want to get admission. I believe the VC have this They they have this VC list. We can even compile our, our members that are qualified. I sent to you, and the link will come out. So I'm praying the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. So the higher you go, the higher we go as a church. I'm praying the Lord will leave. God will take you higher in Jesus' name. I God will take you higher in Jesus' name. So we want to see you making it. Are you, are you getting me? Making making this more than us. 
We want to make we want to see you in schools to be lecturers. We want you to be medical doctors. We want you to become uh, become uh, uh, become something great in life. Lawyers and so on and so forth. I believe God will leave to you leave, take you there in Jesus' name. Question to Pastor Dosi. I'm coming. Well, what advice do you have for school Salike students whose parents cannot avoid private schools? Looking at the state and Nigeria education, uh, there are scholarship program for them to study abroad or in Nigeria private university. Praise God. Thanks for that question. I will just make it very snappy because of time. So uh, there are many scholarship opportunities. So let me just quickly say that the person sitting before you, I'm a product of many scholarships. So I understand that most times you know what you want, but you need money to get to that stage. When I was in 100 level, so for my, for my 200 level, I got a scholarship, this local government scholarship, this scholarship, in 200 level, 300 level, 400 level, even 500 level. And then went for my NYSC, and then applied for master's scholarships. And let me tell you, I've been doing that now for a while, so I know that hundreds of scholarships out there. Information is power. Even for MasterCard scholarship right now, they sponsor many people for undergraduate study in South Africa, in Ghana, which you can apply for, but you have to meet the criteria, which is having your wife with resort or your NECO and for undergrads. But for postgrads, for masters and PhDs, lot of scholarships that people having this money funding in the US, in the UK, anywhere, everywhere in the, in the world, that you can have, but you have to make this application. So if that person really need links, like I mean links to get all the scholarship, you can chat with me. After this, I'm going to, I'm, I'm more than happy to provide such mentorship and guidance, but there are many opportunities out there for scholarships, but you have to meet the requirements. So the answer is yes. Okay. Um, so my email address is dunsin4 Christ at gmail.com. Dunsin and Dunsin with a hen. Don't write Dusi. So it's Dunsin4 as a number, Dunsin for Christ at gmail.com. So with that we can share and then I have a platform where we share scholarship opportunities, mentorship. Because some you have to write essays. What do you want to so there is money, but what can you offer? What can you do? Then you have to be able to market yourself and we can review that for you. Please opportunities are out there from undergrads for masters for phds yes the answer is the yes thank you thank you god bless you but it's okay please nobody is going to ask question after this one no. you, you are not raising your hand up so we are we are behind the schedule good morning, good morning man uh, i am olale i study geography and planning my undergraduate as my first degree my first degree so um, my question is some years ago i read or i heard from someone that said after your first degree that what you intend to study i mean to move further with in your msc that you need to have like two years or minimum a year of experience before you go for your msc so now the question is at what stage should someone go for his MSc, like you have the money, you can proceed. Should you wait and have one or two experience, or can you just move? I'm sure that young mommies will talk, but with that question, I have a very personal experience. To that, you can finish your NYC now if you want to do masters in Nigeria and get to your master and start your masters now. If not in Nigeria, you can be in 500 level. Finishing your last exam and traveling out to start your master's. You don't need NYSE. In Nigeria, you need your certificate. This, this uh, student of mine finished his uh, first degree in FUTA last two years. No, last year actually. And then before going for service, he got a scholarship to do a PhD in Australia without a master's actually. After first degree, just for PhD. And there are many opportunities like that in the US. You don't even have to do a master's. What they, are, what they ask you for is your first degree. And you don't need that experience in quotes, professional experience or anything, to go for your master's or PhD. Most times, a lot of people even think there are no scholarships. And that lack of information is actually tying many people down. But the reality of it is there are a lot of opportunities. Even if you type it now, Google, and just say scholarship in the US for geography and planning for a master's or PhD, 
you will be amazed by the opportunity. Don't have to wait. As soon as, as in Nigeria, as soon as you finish your NYSC, you are free to go for your master's. So you don't need to wait for anything. Um, well, my people have spoken and they have spoken very well. Uh, in fact, if you are if you are uh, serving you are in the NYSC, you can even take the postgraduate form for your master's program. So by the time the admission is completed, you would have also completed your NYSC. But the only thing that can serve as a hindrance is if somebody maybe made a third class. If somebody made a third class, such a family may not be able to go for master's degree directly without going for MP program. But as long as you have a minimum of two two, nothing stops you from applying for your master's program. You don't need any experience. It is only in the polytechnic that uh, students are asked to maybe work for a year after their the OND before they can go for the HND. That is not applicable to the university system. Thank you. Maybe this will help you more. I graduated in 2014, April 2014. Went for my service in August 2014. And then came back from service in July 2015. Just look at the time now, July 2015, I came for my service. And then I started my master's in FUTA in December 2015. And then in September 2016, I got an opportunity to go for another master's. But I was already done with my coursework in FUTA. And then I went for the second master's on scholarship. And I, I came back to FUTA to just come and defend my project. And I started my master's. And I finished these two master's in 2018, February 2018. So in February 2018, which I started in 2015, I'd already done two master's. And then I was like, 2018 is going to be my year of like resting now after a while. And then in July 2018, I traveled to go and do my PhD. I didn't wait. I didn't stop. So if that will help you as well. So I didn't I didn't wait to out. So yeah, so you can. Thank you, sir. We are very grateful for having you in our midst. I believe that uh, if we have uh, people that is going to that want to get admission to further visa for a year, we can consult our daddy. And is a we have opportunity. Are you daddy? Uh -huh. We can consult you. Uh, uh, by his grace. <laughs> so, and uh, in Futa, I believe that uh, you can help us also, Abi. Our uh, mommy will be helping me in Buesti. So I'll be sending this to, it, to her. So and uh, she will be doing yeah, very, about uh, a month ago. Uh, admissions about, it has been even close. And that have been even close. So uh, I have uh, somebody that want to have, uh, that want to get admitted. And I send it to her. And she did it. Wonderfully she did it. So I believe that uh, yes, if you have anybody that is that want admission to Bresi, to Futa, to Foye, that is here. Foye, that is here to. Uh, so if you are qualified, I believe that he will be will do his own best. God will help us in Jesus' name. So God will lift you here also. I God will lift you here also. So we will be able to consult you one day. Are you not? Are you not clinging to it? I will consult you one day. I know we will consult you one day. If you want employment, I say, ah, our brother is in one place. You just write a memo, send it to you, and the person will get employment. It's, it's going to be you. You are not, you are, you are not, uh, see that rem. It's going to be you. Uh, according to you, say that, baby. Huh? You are not doing that rem. It's going to be you. It's going to be me, Jesus' name. So please, uh, the more you read, the more opportunity. That will attend us. The more you go up academically, the more opportunity you are open to. I'm praying the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Can you just give us a last advice? Just one more minute. Advice, huh? Uh, well, thank you. The long and short of our story is that we should work hard. The elders will say, um, as they put now, uh, is shaking panic. How do they put it? 
Uh-huh. There is another one that one that uh, yes. Ishe ki pani, ishe lo pani. So study to get yourself approved. You know, as you are being approved spiritually, you should also be approved physically, financially, and socially. God bless you. I can see that when daddy has is already up. So the bottom line of this is what's the hallmark of all this? The ultimate is to represent Jesus. What's the point of the good job in the so and so different places? The whole mark is to represent Jesus. The whole mark is to be a mobile ambassador of Christ anywhere you find yourself. And you want to do that well. So what I would say is this. In all your striving in life, understand that the fulfillment in life is linked to your growth in God. And understand that after everything on earth, eternity is real. And everything about all this career development, everything about having a better tomorrow is linked to, to this one thing, to glorify Jesus. And that's going to be my final word. Our brother said something the other time, which is the latter part of the topic that we have been trashing for the past few minutes. He said, uh, uh, having a sustainable career and employment for the growth of the church. I give glory to God for the life of Baba Oludu and Baba Olimolade, uh, our late few. You know, in those days, in Christian faith, majority of people there were tailors, artisans. But go to a time, Baba Olimolade and Baba Oludu, my mommy can testify to what I'm seeing and my daddy. You know, they just became traumatized because of the situation of things in the church then. They said, no, enough is enough. Baba started pushing people to college of education. What, it will be shouting on the altar. What if you have TD credit? For, just bring it. We are tired of uh, tailors and this and that. God help him through. And those of us that can even try beyond that, he, be, he began to encourage us then. And thank God for people like us then. I will took to that challenge. I'm now training to you now. Because if the church grows, we may not need to be taxing ourselves by the time we need money. Just th our tithe enough, I mean, our tithe will be enough. If we have business more good among us, we have people of high caliber among us, just be faithful to your tithe. Like I admonish us in our branch, that let's be faithful to our tithe. If we are faithful to our tithe, we don't need to be mounting prayer on people to come and donate money. Because the money will be there. Come in. We know the church will be growing. We'll not be, you know, we don't need all these things. So I'm not throwing the challenge onto you. Baba Oludu has done his own. But, and he's still doing it. Baba Olimoladi has done his own. He has gone. And it is left to you now to make sure that you build yourself with the help of God. And by the time you build yourself, you are in high places. No, you know, the church will definitely grow. Because that like the Bible, I mean, is it the Bible says money answers all things. We don't need to beg. We don't need to be looking for people here and there to come and donate for us. Once you are up there, the thing will just be dropping and everything will be to the glory of God. And for you personally, people will want to record with you. If you are relevant in the society, you don't need to announce yourself. You know, at times I will just put on just small gun. I'll be I will go to the market. Put on small slippers. But by the time I get to the market and I see people, I say, Iyapro, Iyapro, Iyapro. You know, at times I'll be embarrassed. More that she, more that she, rather, I fuck my shaky man, she ga 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 new. You know, what I'm saying is that people will want to associate with you. People will reckon with you, and the name of God will be glorified. Let me get my hands together for the Lord. God will help us in such land. So I'm encouraged. I will, I will go for my masters very soon. <laughs> God bless you.
Come let's have a prayers. Okay, praise the Lord. Though the looking at our program, this prayer should have taken like twenty minutes, but because of time it's gonna be like five minutes. So we're gonna round up. So one prayer I want us to pray before I just run this off is just to tell the Lord in the name of Jesus, you're gonna pray for yourself that in the name of Jesus, the potential that God has placed on my inside fight the expression. In the name of Jesus. That this only one life will be to glorify the Lord. Just go ahead and tell God in Jesus' name that all that I've had, O oh Lord, that every seed, all the gift that you have placed on my inside will find expression in the name of Jesus. Go ahead and tell God. Go ahead and tell God that, Lord, I pray that I will not live a wasted life. My life will glorify you. My life will glorify you. I will not live a wasted life in the name of Jesus. Go ahead. We have five minutes to just do this. That, Lord, in this only one life, let my life, let my life, let my life represent you well. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We have less than five minutes to just pray that in the name of Jesus, I ask God for grace to be able to represent you well. Everything you have placed on my inside as talent, as gifts, as potentials, I pray, Lord, I'm going to maximize them all. In the name of Jesus, I'm going to live to my full potential. I'm going to live to my full potential to represent God in the name of Jesus. I'm going to live to my full potential. Go ahead and tell God in the name of Jesus, Lord, I live for you. 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 The Bible says, for the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord. As the waters cover the sea, that through you the knowledge of the Lord will go beyond the face of, our, of your immediate environment. That because of you, through you, the name of the Lord will be glorified. Go ahead and tell God that you will, be, you will fulfill your full potential. Go ahead and tell God in the name of Jesus, Lord, I live for you. 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 In the name of Jesus. Lord, I live for you. In the name of Jesus. Lord, I live for you. In the name of Jesus. For in Jesus' name, we pray. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 from verse 14 to 17. The Bible talks about the story of a man. The Bible says that man is called a poor wise man. I don't know if you have seen that in your Bible before. The Bible says that man is a poor wise man. And there was this enemy that came and beset the city. And something happened. The Bible says that the poor wise man gave this word of wisdom that they were able to restore the country or the, or the city. But nobody remember this man. They said the voice of the man was not heard because he was poor. Do wise. I'm telling you, you're going to tell God that, Lord, my voice will be heard. In this generation, my voice will be heard. In the name of Jesus, go ahead and tell God that, Lord, I break every chains of poverty, every chains of non-entity, every chain of, 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 of wasteful opportunities. In the name of Jesus, that, Lord, my voice shall be heard. In this time, in this generation, that through me, the name of the Lord will be not abroad. Through me, the name of the Lord will be glorified. Far beyond the face of our communities. That through you, the name of the Lord will be glorified. In the name of Jesus. Go ahead, go ahead and tell God, don't forget, we've considered career opportunities. And also employment, number one, for a better tomorrow and also for church growth. And I'm telling you, we're talking about church growth, we are talking about the body of Christ. The Lord, through me, Lord, the name of the Lord will be glorified. In the name of Jesus. What about three minutes more? The Lord just help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. That in this, my, my, my young stage, oh Lord, I, I will leave it to glorify your Lord, to glorify the Lord. In the name of Jesus. Have mercy, oh Lord. Have mercy, oh Lord. Help me, Lord. For in Jesus' name, we pray. For people that are actually struggling academically, I just perceive that I should pray for you. If you are struggling academically, sincerely, you are reading. Sincerely, you want to study. But it seems as though your input is not in constant or in sync with your output. I want us to, I want us to pray. Do you believe in prayers? Do you believe God answers prayers? Do you believe that God can take a man from his evil to evil over the night? Do you believe in the miraculous power of the Lord? So therefore, in the name of Jesus, you're going to pray that Lord, you know yourself, you are struggling academically. That Lord, I pray that Lord visit me. Bless my brain. In the name of Jesus. Go ahead and just tell God in all, in all humility that Lord, at this time I pray, Lord, every struggling academically, every struggles academically, that the Lord will visit you. As you go back to campus, as you leave this program, you are going to experience this shift that's going to be obvious that God has visited you. In the name of Jesus. Lord, help me, Lord. If you are struggling academically, that the Lord will help you. 
Lord, help this once in the name of Jesus. Lord, help this once in the name of Jesus. Lord, help this once in the name of Jesus. Lord, help this once in the name of Jesus. Let your mercy be available to them. In the name of Jesus. For in Jesus' name, we pray. We have about two minutes more. We're going to pray and tell God. Lord, for those people that are looking for a job, how many people believe in prayers here? Do you really believe in prayers? Do you know that when we pray, we are not informing God? Do you know? He knows. When we pray, what we are doing is that we are involving him. We are letting him to know that our dependency is not on ourselves. Our dependency is not based on our CV. We are saying our dependency is of him. That's what we do in prayers. So I'm going to tell God that, Lord, for those, especially who want to intercede also for those that are looking for a job, that the Lord will, pro- will create opportunities. And for those that God has been given opportunities, but they are not sensitive to those opportunities, that the Lord will make them to be aware of those opportunities. Let's go ahead and tell God in the name of Jesus. Father Lord, we ask and we pray at this time that Lord, for those that are looking for a job, Lord, that we're going to give them opportunities in the name of Jesus. We pray Lord for opportunities for everyone in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. For those with business ideas, they don't even know what to do next. They need money, capital to start this. That Lord, in the name of Jesus, you will provide for them. You will visit them, Lord, in Jesus' name. For in Jesus' name, we pray. For those that are looking for global opportunities, like applying for opportunities for work, for scholarships, in the name of Jesus, I pray for you that the Lord will open doors for you. And as we have done this today, Lord, beyond just the words, let your spirit breathe upon your people. Let there be manifestation of these words. That even after this section, people are coming back with different business ideas, coming back with a lot of testimonies pertaining to job opportunities, coming back with a lot of testimonies about scholarships in the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, we pray that through this campus fellowship, Christian Faith Campus Fellowship, that the name of the Lord will be revealed. Amen. That people will see that there is a God in the life of these people. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we thank you because we have prayed in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, mommy. Thank you, my daughter. God bless you. God bless you, ma. God, this is, very soon we'll be calling you to talk to us about the opportunity to open for scholarship. Are you ready, me? So, be prepared for us, so. November, teenagers camp. So, go ahead, pause in the name of Jesus. Amen. Yesterday, we, we, we told you that we are going to give you a time to ask questions on the married talk we had yesterday. So, but we do have time yesterday. We want to create just a, a few minutes for you to ask your question. I will be adding my mic to Boshio. So, to anchor this this hour. So, Boshio, come. Praise the Lord. I want to call on our mommy, mommy, our mommy to join our mommy for this uh, session of question and answer. Thank you, Max. Yes, ma- yes. Praise the Lord. I believe the majority of us we were here during the marriage talk yesterday. Um, maybe one or two questions about in our mind. We need clarification or clarity concerning those things. I want us to raise up your hands, or better still, you can put it maybe in writing, or you can write it and forward it to the usher. Yes, if you have questions or questions, please let me. Okay, one. Okay, we need three people or three questions. If you want to write, okay, two. I think one somebody is sending Osha now. Thank you. Please read the top. No question when the ministers are answering the you know, they are answering your question. There is no question coming again. If you have your question now, please ask. The third person. Okay. Maybe the person will stick on. Yes. Your question. My, my question is, um, I, I heard from some men of God, the few men of God, that when they married, 
like they add nothing, like nothing. And yesterday, Daddy was teaching us that we need to have a sustainable income before we go into marriage. So I want to ask, um, with what they said, can we, like, can we youth venture into marriage? Like we have faith. They said they have faith and it is faith that led them. Can we say it is faith and we go ahead even without having anything? Like can we go, like believe in what they said that faith led them without nothing? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the living Jesus. Ah, you maybe you misunderstood please, the person. Mommy, sorry, that please. Said. Sorry, but let's listen to mommy. Some people are more money. Please. Let's listen to mommy. Uh, maybe you didn't quite understand what the person that said they had nothing was trying to say. Uh, is, there is no how you can go into marriage without having anything. Even if it is your certificate, you will have been equipped with it. Even if it is your uh, trade that you have learned, you will have been equipped with it. What I, I think what that person is trying to say is that uh, he has not got a house, no vehicle, uh, he's only having some, maybe a room and a room self con a ordinary room and parlor. It's what he's having with a few furniture. Not well acute to so his own taste, and he just went on in faith like that. But will have been acute with something that that uh, God will bless. God will not bless nothing. God will bless, nothing, you know. You must have something before God will bless. You. If it's your certificate, one day you know that your certificate will fetch you something. But at least you must have what you will put on your table to eat before you go into marriage. You must have a house. Where you're going to live, you must have some clothing, maybe not uh, as you want it. Not the type of uh, mo uh, money you can use to buy what you want that you have. But at least what you need, you are able to afford it. So that is what the person is, I think that is what he's saying. And that is, uh, you go into the marriage with faith. Ladies in the world, they want this, they want that. That the husband should be rich and be having money, big money. I, I want to buy a tie. I, I need 10,000. And the person should give her uh, maybe 20,000 or 15,000. That is what ladies like. Uh -huh. But now that they are starting and going along in faith, that means that she can't even afford to give the 10,000. Uh -huh. But at least knows that the future will be okay. I remember when I got wedded, we were we in a two bedroom, face me, I face you, apartment. Uh -huh. We went into marriage. Just, is it not by faith? Uh -huh. We had some furniture, at least moderate. Uh -huh. it's, it's with every starter. It's not that you just go on marriage uh, on bed of roses. Some are luckier than us. That even they were not as learned as we were then, they had the building before they went into marriage. They have, uh, they are entrepreneurs, uh, people, what do you call them? So, uh, they have their own uh, personal business. And they were able to, the man was able to erect a building of his own before he got uh, married. So, that one is different. Somebody, we, we were renting apartments for years. Before we we got where they go, we had the mobile, uh, I mean, mobile booker. And the car was okay. But it's not everybody that has that opportunity. Because you are not mobile now. Because of that, you won't go into marriage. No. You are going to marriage, you know in the future, you will become mobile by the grace of God. You know in the future, you have your own house. So that is what we are saying. So by this time now, you know, I will be giving out this to people to, to rent now. I'm not going to rent any house now. As the wife of your general vice, is that true? Mm -hmm. I know if, we, if it is not true, you people will sustain the, the fact. Am I right? 
Uh -huh. So when you are young like this now, can you give a house to lend to somebody? No, that, that does not prevent you from going to marriage. God will bless you in Jesus' name. Do the doctrine of the church allow putting or posting picture of couples to be to be couple to be before the wedding day or putting their pictures on the invitation cards program and souvenir or banner or poster and the rest? Does the doctrine of the church, the ministry, permit couples to be to Post picture, maybe to post their picture online, maybe together, putting their pictures at the back of invitation cards, program they want to use, maybe in the church, <laughs> or banners. Some people use banners and posters. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hey, you see, we are bringing you up in a godly, holy way. And we always teach you before your wedding day that we must not uh, do anything that we make you to regret and you go into so defiling your bed. The Bible says, let the marriage bed be what? Honorable among men, and let it be on day five. We don't want you to defy your bed before the wedding day. Because if you do it secretly, and we don't even know, you will meet it. You, it will work against you. you know, we have seen couples who have done it secretly. They think nobody is looking at them. Who is looking at them? And God has put it in their cooler for them. And then when the suffering came, the sister came to me and the brother. The Lord told me they did this and that. That was why they had this and that problem. Recently, a sister was having a problem with their husband. Then they, they, I sent her to a prophet of God in this ministry. Go and tell that prophet that you have a problem with your husband. And the prophet came to me personally. I said, Mommy, what happened is what he didn't want to say to her. But the Lord told him that they have met before the wedding. Not, not several months ago. But maybe a few days to the marriage. The, the man, you know men. Eh, maybe we are about to marry now. Even it could be the lady. Eh? How can you prove to me that you love me? Then you start to hug, you start to play the messy thing. And before you know what you are doing, the other thing has happened. Say that God will deliver all of you. If God can keep us, I got wedded, I got into this ministry as a young lady, a youth. My husband, a youth. So we got wedded in, in, the, in the service of the Lord. We know what we are teaching you. We are not teaching you parables. We are teaching you what the devil can do and how you can avoid it. That time we didn't have anybody to teach us so. But the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, they were teaching us. Because Christ in you is the author of, of a what? Glory. You know you are heaven bound. You are moving forward to the, uh, to the glory land. And you must not do anything that we annoy God. The, the, uh, the quotation we all quoted, was in, is it not written in the scripture a long time before we were born? It's there after we have gone. It will still be there. So that is it. We don't do it. Though the temptation will come. I don't know. We, 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 we were a human being. Nobody, nobody was on our neck. Like if we are on your neck. Because we are pioneers of the ministry. Nobody then will come and be shouting on us. Sister Oludu, Sister Mary. Don't, don't touch each other. The law is written in your heart. In our heart. The laws of God are written in everybody's heart. The temptation will come. But we know we must not. So we must notice, we must not. And then that's why the temptations God helped us. Even on our wedding day, we did not. Because we were not ready. 
We wanted to pray on our wedding day. So it's no, no go area. Let's pray first before we start this thing. We are dancing, rejoicing all through. Now we come to the bedroom. Can we start now? No. Let's talk to our God. Who wrote all those things into our heart? Who we are after us like this? Nobody. But the Holy Spirit. That is why you must be conversant with the Trinity. You know, when you hug one another, you want to take picture. You are couples. You are you don't have wood skin. I do you have wood skin. No. You are a human being. Come up, my daughter. <laughs> Hello, darling. Love you. Hmm? Don't you love me? <laughs> Just tell me you love me. I love you, mom. <laughs> yeah. I love me. You love me. I love you. You do the same thing. <laughs> 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 Okay. So gradually, gradually. And you see, you everybody knows you are about to wait. Nobody puts their uh, eyes on you again. If anybody says, Oh, come on, if I say where do you want? Everybody will look away. Okay. Now, at the photo, Eleni, at the Bera, at the Sheba, at the Sawo, we carry one another. We did that. We went to the seashore. We did that. We did that. After that, you come. Are you not a human being? Let's rest a while somewhere. And while taking rest, we take some drinks. Maybe in the cafe. Or maybe in the restaurant beside the, the shore. Where you were dancing and doing all these things. What do you think will happen? So that we don't want you to go into sin. That is it. That's if you don't take, if you don't move close to each other. You can't take pictures together, can you? Mm -hmm. That's why we say, no need though, we don't want your pictures. We want you on the wedding day. We don't even wed want wedding ring. Who knows why? On your, on your card, or your program. Who knows why we don't want wedding ring? Who can answer me? From you, from among you. Who can answer me why you don't want wedding ring? Oh, yeah, that. Because we will not be joined together by the wedding ring in this church. Because we believe it is, the, it is not the wedding ring that makes you one. You see the wedding ring that will keep you and make you one? No! All these things, they are things that we are made by human being. Just symbol, symbolic things. We don't go in symbolic things. In those days, we were using Bible to join people together. I don't know, my father in the Lord, the lady who has gone to rest. I've been questioning my husband. He has not been able to give me a single answer concerning it. Say, Daddy, why are we not using Bible to join people together again? But I guess, I know my daddy in the Lord, Reverend, my late uh, Reverend, I know him. He doesn't want to put anybody under any strong cause. Because the way people are living their lives, uh, in the in the in the after the wedding, the way they live their life is not uh, what at times one would be happy to say out. So he doesn't want to put any any cause on people. The more, just give leave them to the grace of God. We, we we used to see a lot of things and hear a lot of things. So that is why we don't allow those things. The person who asked the question, am I clear? Everybody, are you all satisfied? <laughs> I got wedded with a wedding ring because it was not then a well-organized ministry like this. I, did, I just love it. Even I wanted to do my marriage in my old church, Catholic church, when my husband said, <laughs> that's your father, I will put water on my head. So I won't go to them, oh. I won't go to them. Then I didn't know that it's a covenant be behind that water. I didn't know it. We call it only water. Whereas, mommy, water, water. That one is details, yeah? God will open your eyes to know. So, I don't want that water from your Reverend Father. So, I can't go to your church to do marriage. We see fellowship then. Interdenominational. So, I won't go. And I say, what do I do now? Because of that, we delayed our wedding for three months. Was it three or four months? Before we could decide to use a neutral ground. So, what 
what am I saying in essence? Things that is not biblical. Things that will not enrich you spiritually. Things that will not lift you up. When I got wedded with the wedding ring, he said, I don't want your ring, go. I said, ah, me alone will use the ring. He said, you want it. Me, you can use it. But me, oh, I don't want your ring on my finger. I don't want jewelry on my, on my body. I don't want your ring. And I said, I will use it. I took the ring. And I was using it. But uh, luckily for me, when I got wedded, at my first pregnancy and baby, I started getting fat. <laughs> I, was, I was like, this is my daughter. Even God not talk to her, uh, her size when I got wedded. I just, I just started putting on weight, sir. Huh? And uh, at the time, the ring did not enter again. I said, Daddy, let's go to Ibadan. And I just this and said, you can go to Ibadan. <laughs> okay. I catch it in my bus. Underneath everything I have, I just save it there. Nothing must touch it too, until I have time to go to Ibadan. And expand it. Because I wanted that very one. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, one day, I was looking for a document uh, under, under my uh, bus, underneath the first layer. I started looking to, uh, at that for, that, that, uh, for those documents. Then I, met, I saw my ring, say, hey, my ring go. <laughs> the only three said, I was the only one in the room, no. The only three said, that's your idol that you keep there. When are you going to do away with it? I said, eh? don't. I said, my ring. That's your ring, is your an idol. Don't you see how you are carrying and think of it? It's your idol. When are you going to part with it? I said, ah, part with it? It's my wedding ring. He said, it's an idol. When are you going to part with your idol? Eh? I said, ah, anytime, Lord, I'm ready to part with it. He said, okay, take it down and grow and throw it into the bush behind your house. Am I? Look, nobody. Me and the Holy Spirit. My that time now, I cannot say I don't know the voice of the Holy Spirit again. Pick it. Throw it away. Pick it now. You want to part with your idol. Pick it now. Go and throw it at the back of your house there in that bush. I pick it with my own hand. I walk down there. I threw it away until before I had peace. I, I cannot understand why Jacob had to take it to the ring when they were trying to purify and sanctify themselves. He has to take all the rings in the air, in the body, in the nose that they brought from Egypt. He packed everything and put it under the oak tree. He buried it there. So, there is something you want that, that we are doing in this ministry that is not biblical. If you want an explanation, it can come to us. But many people sat and not regenerated. Many people sat, they are not born again. Many people had are not, they are not close to God. They don't want to know. They just want this. They want that. The Lord will help you in Jesus' name. Yes. You know the trend today is to use this uh, aku? What do we call it? Beads. That's the trend today. I'm a child of God. Well, every child of God is a princess and a king. Am I talking? Uh -huh. So I want this. I want that. Do you see it on Jesus? Was that what the disciples were wearing about? Are the apostles? That they were being beaten because they preached the gospel. How far have you preached the gospel? How far have you proved that you are a child of the king? Is there authority in your mouth? How many people have been, as you were going along the street, how many people have got ill because of your shadow? The, 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 the shadow of uh, Peter and all the rest, we are healing the sick. You better aspire in the right area. Eh? The outward appearance. Is not a, a spokesman for your Christian stand. Is that okay? It is your actions. Action speaks louder than voice. It is your way of life. It is your intimacy with God. Look, if I don't understand the voice of the Lord, will He tell me to take my ring that an idol I should go and throw it away? Is it possible? God will help you in Jesus' name. Well. The next question. If I receive him tomorrow through prayer, the Lord ready for marriage. 
what should I do? Second, okay. I want to combine two together. We agree that the wedding ring won't join us together. But can't it be gifted to your spouse as an expression of love? Uh, maybe the first one. The first one is if I receive him to marry through prayer, but not yet ready for marriage, what should I do? Praise the Lord. If you are like uh, when our pastor was teaching us yesterday, you no, know, every step was detailed in his. Um, in his message and he gave us the way to marry how to marry so and in that last part he was telling us that when you receive the confirmation you are so sure God has spoken to you that you go to your pastor I think I'm right yes so you should go to your branch pastor but your branch pastor knows the next thing to do Praise the Lord. So I still believe that is the thing. Because situations may not be the same for everybody. Situations may be different. But when you have your branch, because when you receive the confirmation, it is not in your power or within your power to now begin to discuss with the sister. When are we going to do this? When are we going to do that? Even if the church allows that you go for courtship, and I'm sure before the church can allow you to go for courtship, they must have seen that you are ready to get married. Because it is very dangerous if you are not yet ready to get married and you start moving together, or you start discussing together, you start, you know, doing things together. So the best thing is that, or maybe you are in, see your school, an undergraduate student, and you, are, you, know, you have received the confirmation. The best thing is to keep calm, be prayerful, wait for God's direction. But you must meet your pastor who will tell you the next thing to do. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Uh, thank you, Ma. I'm honest. And with this, I believe we are. I believe we are clear with the explanation and the answer given to those questions. And I pray God will guide us through in Jesus' name. Shall we clap our hands together for our moments? Praise the Lord. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Uh, there is a popular Yoruba adage that says, I don't want to say the other one because it might lose someone. Eh? The blast meat, they say when it's striking the high on at the same point, what's the meaning? Eh? So that shows you want to bring something out. And that particular spot is very, very important. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> Amen. And that's why I want to repeat this and to make it more clearer. Our mommy has spoken it all. And we have heard from the top. It's not permitted. It's not allowed. It's not part of the doctrine of this church. When you have not been joined together eh, for uh, people uh, that are still in courtship to be taking pictures together and be posting it on internet, on social media, it's wrong. That's what our mommy is saying. You know. I think that's that question. When you see anybody doing that, that person is in error. He's going against the doctrine of the church. Because without being joined together, you, are, you see the analogy our mommy gave. Huh? Those are the subtle ways that the devil introduced people into sin. It will not come in a day. When she saw like Yoruba, I want to let them walk back. I want to curb that. You might say you are strong. You can do it. What of those people that are weak? Paul said it as we were told yesterday. That if it is meat that will make others to commit 
to, 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 to offend. I will not take meat. He said, because of the weak. So please, let's take it. You see anybody doing that? You see it on the internet? Send back to that person that you are in error. You are not following the landmark. You are not following the track. You are moving to another man's field. They might be doing it in other ministry. That's another man's field. You are a thief. When you, you move it to another man's uh, track. So that's not our track in Christian faith. Wait for your time. You still have the time. Why are you rushing? And your mouth will be burnt. And you will not be able to enjoy it. You will give yourself name. People will be arguing over, over your life. Why? So our mommy has spoken it to and it's clear. So anybody will see doing that one next now, you know the name you should give to that person. So God will help us in Jesus' name. And those that have done it in the past, they are forgiven. Abi, are they not forgiven? We overlook them. We are not calling them rebels. But let people that are following, don't make them as reference. Basically, a brother so so did it, sister so so did it, and they were still welcoming. We will not send them away. Yes, but you know it has meaning. I told you in the future yesterday. We will all grow to become a leader. We should aspire to become a leader. But when you are going against the rule of the church now, then you are not qualified to be a leader because you will not have mouth in the future. The people will ask, how did you do your own? So don't let us scatter and spoil the church. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. the Lord. Uh, we would like to pray now. If we check your program, we've had a lot of things this morning from the interaction and for our money as touching our marriage. It's time to commit some of these things into prayer and to ask God even for actualize even for the actualization of all this we are hearing and to be the practitioners of all these things we are hearing day by day that god will give us even a listening ear and grace to be the doer shall we rise up as we commit ourselves into the hands of the lord as we talk to god this moment now i want us to pray I really pray unto God that Father in the name of Jesus Christ, I receive grace. I receive grace. I receive grace. And one of the statements our Father and the Lord mentioned yesterday is the black sheep of the family. <laughs> Do you want to be the black sheep of the family that people will be referencing to as that woman? Open your mouth and stand to God that Father assist me. Grace to comply. Grace to be the True doer of your words. Father, give unto me in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let's open our mouth and pray to God this morning. It's good to listen very well. The evil life. Even when you are listening, you will laugh. People are telling you, you argue. <laughs> that is emergency, you are this age, you are this era, you are this century, and the rest. But, century may change. Yes, the world may change. God never change. God will not because we are in the 21st century to change the standard. No. Pray and tell it to God, Lord, me to comply with your standard. That will you help me to actualize my vision in life. That will help me to fulfill my race on earth. Open your mouth and pray to God this morning. That is the protection in you. That we need to actualize the evil, utilize and make it make use of it a lie. Why can't you pray and tell it to God that Father? I receive great this morning. I receive great this morning, this morning, this morning, to come to the landmark. Open your mouth and pray that God help me, help me, help me, help me, help me in my career. I receive grace to shine. I receive grace to shine. I receive grace to shine. I 
receive you to shine in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I receive you to shine. You are thinking that I have nothing now. I will not do it. I want us, I want to tell us because you have that God in you, you have everything. You have everything it takes to fulfill destiny. Daniel and the three Hebrews were just slaves, even in Babylon. But because they have God, God lives in them and they did exploits. It could make Daniel to even declare that they that do know their God shall do great exploits. Shall do exploits. Open your mouth and pray this morning. Because I know you, God, I will do exploits. I will do exploits. Ministerially, academically, financially, career wise, I will do exploits in the mighty name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray to God. Open your mouth and pray to God. Open your mouth and pray to God. In the name of Jesus says, Declare and declare, I am not hindered by the circumstances of the nation, by the economy of the nation. I am not hindered. Decree it, decree it, decree it. Though it might seem that I, what is going on presently, you cannot understand. It's not even the way you plan the life that you are seeing it even happening presently. But I want you to believe and say, I believe, I believe that all is well with me. I believe all is well with my academy. Maybe you have even planned it. Ah, as you have done it again, they are done it, they are doing it, they are stopping it. You have planned your life, you have planned this, you have planned that, I will do this, I will do that. But that is the kind of delay now. Pray, I say, Lord, nothing is delay my prayer. Progress. My progress is in you, is in your hands, O Lord. I will fulfill my destiny. Thank you, Jesus. Open your mouth and pray to God. That marriage, tell it to God. Some people are still thinking, ah, he is too far, he is too far, he is too far. I'm not ready for it now. Pray and tell it to God that, Father, maritally, I will fulfill your purpose. Maritally, I will fulfill your purpose. My life will be a testimony. In the name of Jesus. You will choose for me, no, no. I will not choose for myself. My own shall be glorious. I will have a happy own. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. I know we are blessed already. Even if we go from here today, we are already blessed. So can we begin to appreciate God for that this moment? And Lord, I thank you for your love for me, for bringing me to this place at this point in time. I give you glory for your love. And because if not because God loves you, you will not be here today. Just say, Lord, I thank you for your love for me. Thank you for your love for me. Because you love me, you have brought me here to hear these timely messages. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, Father. Are we even appreciating God? I can't even hear us. Let's say, Lord, I thank you. And let's tell him that, Lord, I love you too. Lord, I love you too. I love you. God, God has expressed his love to you. Now, can you express your own love to him too? Say, Lord, I love you too. Can we take this one together? Now we declare that we love you.
That by, by the time we are all this year uh, program that we are going to have limited people but we are very happy today that uh, in the history of uh, campus congress it seems that this one is special are, are you are you sure are you are you agree with me it's special in uh, in population in moving in the power of god i'm praying that lord next year we are not going to use this place are you not are you, are you not saying amen to that I said we are not going to do this place. See it already. We are not. It's not. This place is not even going to contain us again. So uh, I'm praying by next year we are going to go down to the main auditorium. Do you believe that one? That God will multiply us. He will make us it. Uh, we 
yanak gibi böyleler. Ah yanak gibi böyleler. Ah yazı değil ya. Ben de ben de ya ben de geçmiş ha. Ah mami, say thank you mami. Ya ben de geç mami. God bless you. We appreciate God your life. It's not you, but we appreciate God your life for your care. God help us in Jesus name. I want to thank uh, the general coordinators. We want to announce to all the pastors to come to come and sit down in their seats. So uh, let all the pastors come and sit down in their in their seats. If you're a pastor in the uh, in campus uh, in the campus of campus ministry, please go come and sit down in your seats. I want to. I will not. If you cannot recognize everybody. If you are a collector of fellowships, of our fellowships, shout hallelujah, we recognize you. All the collectors, well, all the collectors stand up. All the collectors in all the capacities stand up. Uh, all the collectors in all the fellowships stand up. I will have all the clear. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. God bless you. I see you here. Yeah. God bless you. All the sister collectors, shout hallelujah. All the secretaries, shout hallelujah. All the workers, shout hallelujah. All the members, shout hallelujah. All the witnesses and visitors, shout hallelujah. By next, by next year, we are going to be on the gabbard. Are you sure? I say all the admission seekers here, by next year, you will be on the, on the gabbard. And I say you will be on the gabbard. And all the copper, shout hallelujah. Shame, are you not know the copper? Ah. Shout hallelujah! You will get employment. God bless us in Jesus' name. We are going straight to the next program before us. So we are going to be welcoming the choir. Let's open our eyes as we will be praying that God should bless us in the next program. Choir, please. Sometimes I hear you in my 